Hey everybody! Well today I thought we could take a look at the EFX Collectibles Luke Skywalker Reveal lightsaber. So this lightsaber came out in 2011 I believe so it would be about 10 years old now as of the making of this video and this is one of those lightsaber replicas that are extremely hard to get a hold of. These things are super rare and if you can find them they go for a, like a couple thousand dollars or some crazy amount. I've seen them go as high as three thousand dollars and it's just one of those things where I think the people who do have them are just hanging on to them and then if they do sell uh, because they are so scarce they just command a high price. So uh, these had a limited edition of a thousand and there's the nameplate here and I'll show you a close-up of that in a minute and I have number uh, let's see what is it 383 so I, I honestly don't even know if they made the full 1000 every time I have seen these on the rare occasions that they do show up um, I never see one that has a higher number than uh, well it, it doesn't I never see them any higher than 500 so if any of you guys uh, have one of these that has a number that's higher than 500 or you've seen one um, please comment in the comment section because uh, I, I would like to know I mean I, I honestly don't think they even made the full 1000 of these all right well uh, let me show you some close-ups of this okay so the actual platform that it sits on um, is actually made up of uh, it's like a wood and then there's a layer of acrylic on there and then the whole thing uh, has a sheet piece of sheet metal that's on the in between it's like sandwiched it in between there so you can see there's the Star Wars logo on there and so you I, I think if I can remember you had to screw these together or put it all together I don't remember it, it, it may have been all together I don't remember but you can disassemble it but uh, let me show you the back of it okay so on the bottom here you can see uh, this is like the wood material it's got the nice little rubber feet on there to keep it from sliding around and then we have the EFX lightsaber EFX collectible so it's got the 2011 date on there so uh, that's what that part looks like now each of these lightsabers came with one of these plaques so you can see here it just says Luke Skywalker reveal lightsaber uh, serial number and that mine is number 383 so worldwide edition of a thousand and so um, you had to put you had to slide this plate into this uh, this little thing here and this is kind of a wonky little thing that they came up with but what this was is that you could actually um, let me see if I can move it a little bit these these would slide I mean you can kind of see this moves a little bit so these little acrylic feet would uh, slide along these rails and you could adjust how wide you wanted this so if you wanted to display your lightsaber in the closed position you would just have it uh, you know kind of closer together or if you wanted it in the open position you probably have them as wide as I have them here I always keep mine in the open position because you want to see all the cool internals so it was kind of cool that they uh, they did give you this you know ability to adjust that but it's a, a little uh, wonky in some ways so this also came with this envelope that had a bunch of paperwork in it for like the uh, the warranty and the instructions on how to change the battery and how to open the lightsaber and all that stuff so there's really not you know that much interesting stuff here and then it also came with this cool little postcard or this little poster kind of thing that showed Luke and so um, for those of you unfamiliar with this lightsaber um, this was based on a scene that was uh, kind of a controversial thing for the longest time they kept saying that there was a scene that showed Luke putting his lightsaber together and uh, nobody seemed to have any footage of it and for the longest time nobody knew for sure if it was real or if it was an actual thing and then somehow some way somebody found it they found the lost footage and even Mark Hamill said that he never remembered filming that scene and then uh, after they did find it, he said that he did he did remember it. But I don't know. I kind of you know, in, if you look at that scene, it doesn't even look like it's Mark Hamill because the hood was over his face so much you couldn't really see it. And I kind of have a feeling that that was actually shot as a second unit shot that had uh, uh, you know another actor filling in for Mark Hamill, and that might be why he didn't remember doing it originally. Um, I mean, I just kind of feel like that's maybe another reason why it was cut out of the film or something. But um, in the latest version of Star Wars, uh, when they showed it in theaters, I think they actually put that scene in because I remember it got uh, <laughs> it got applause in the theater. And it was really cool to see it. You know, the film you could tell the film wasn't as in good a shape. So, all right. So this is the cool box that this lightsaber came in, and this was uh, absolutely amazing. So uh, let me give you a closer look at that. Okay, real quick, I just found this card. I forgot that I had it in the display case. And I thought I, there was something like this. So this was actually the Certificate of Authenticity. And uh, here it tells you the story about this that scene. So here's, that, here's a, uh, a still from that scene. 
and you can actually see 3PO uh, sitting out there in, uh, outside the cave. And if you watch that footage, you can tell that it was pretty much saved off the cutting room floor because you know the film's not in that great a, of condition. And then here you can kind of read about that. And so now, uh, if you want to pause the video during this segment, you can um, read all of this right here. And then here's some more right here. And it just kind of tells you the whole story about that scene and uh, how they found it and put it back in the movie. So it's really cool. All right, so I thought I'd throw this in there real quick. So much like the Master Replica's lightsabers, this one had some pretty premium packaging as well. So we have this box here that has the Star Wars logo right there and EFX in the corner. And then this was actually kind of like a little drawer that you'd pull out. So this inner box would pull out of the outer one so that it was just kind of like a hollow box like that and then we had this really nice silver one that was pretty cool looking as well all right so now looking from the top here this would actually open like this and then we have the star wars luke skywalker reveal lightsaber return of the jedi limited edition and then we have this nice sponge in here that would come out and there it was packaged in there and it looks really really good so let me take this out and we'll take a closer look at it so having it displayed on the stand now, so we can see that this one here is the cleaner version, more like the hero version that Darth Vader uh, has a, there's a close-up of Darth Vader holding it when he's telling Luke that it, he, uh, he says, I see you've constructed a new lightsaber. And uh, the rest of the movie, you see the version two, which has all the paint scratches and stuff all over it. So this is more like the clean version, but you can see that it looks really good. Now this one is a little smaller than the Master Replicas version, which I, kind of found surprising. I wouldn't think there'd be any uh, size difference, but there is. It's just slightly smaller in length and width, I think. But you can see it's got this really nice copper uh, thing going on here. And uh, it's got the little lights here. There's all kinds of details. So uh, let me show you some close-ups of this, and then I'll show you uh, the features that it has. All right, so getting a closer look at this here, we can kind of see what the uh, front of this looks like. It's all smooth and it kind of has that uh, hole that we always are familiar with seeing on there. The copper is really well done right in that area. Um, everything looks, I mean, you know, really, really good. It doesn't have the uneven uh, heatsink fins like the original prop had. Oh, well, I don't know if the Hero one had un uneven ones or not. This is that really nice copper, um, I guess it was more like a circuit board or whatever. And on the side here you can see the uh, the little arrows. And these arrows had a distinctive blink to them uh, in that scene. I think the red one blinked a certain amount of times and the green one blinked a certain amount of times and they actually replicated that, which is pretty amazing. And then there's this little black detail, which is also a switch for another feature that I'll show you as well. And then here's the pommel, which was, uh, as we all know, was actually a faucet handle <laughs> that they used to make the original. All right, so let me show you how this thing uh, becomes the reveal lightsaber. So real quick, I just wanted to show you the difference between the sizes of the Master Replicas version 2 and this version here. So now you can kind of see how the version 2, this one here, is uh, wider. You can tell by the middle, especially where the uh, heatsink fins are. And then lengthwise, let me see if I can match these up. I'd say they're, they're almost actually the same length. I'd say the version 2 here is um a little bit longer just by maybe a fraction of an inch <laughs> you know it's like really small but you can tell that there is definitely a size difference between the two but uh, yeah so i just thought i would show you what those what the difference of those two look like all right so the best feature of this lightsaber is the fact that it's a reveal lightsaber so that means parts of it open up so you can see the inside so the first part we'll start with is this pommel back here you actually push in and turn it and you'll feel it unlock and then this slides out and inside here you will see that there is a little kyber crystal down inside there i'll show you the, how that lights up here in just a second and then the next feature is that you turn this and then you pull these this part out and now you've got all this fantastic detail going on in here and they really decked it out it looks really good that gold is really well done and uh, I really kind of like this piece right here, the way that looks. A really thin piece of copper in here in the middle. And uh, yeah, I mean, that looks really, really good. You can kind of see all of that going on. Here's the other side of it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And then uh, also I like how these lines also are revealed when you, when you open up that part right there. 
And then this top section here, this also pops open. You just pull that out and then it reveals just this little detail going on here on the top. And it's kind of the same all the way around there, but... So yeah, so the whole thing turned out to be so long, I can't even get it in the whole... <laughs> the whole picture here, but you can kind of see how that looks. So that's why that stand has that extension so that you can, re, uh, you know, display it in this, this way right here. Okay, so uh, let me show you some of the other features that it has. Okay, so I wanted to kill the main light so you can see the light features on here better. So this little section here, the little circuit card piece, it's, this actually slides open. And on the inside here, you will see all this circuitry going on in here. So this little thing back here is a little button. When you push this, it turns on the lights, the little arrows. So um, as you can see, they're blinking like the, the green one. Um, I'm not sure how many times it blinks right there. I think the uh, red one only blinks four or five times and the green one blinks longer. And if you watch that, that missing scene in the movie, you will see that these blink exactly that way. They actually blink <laughs> the same amount of time. So I think that's really cool. And this will keep blinking for a while and then it'll uh, turn itself off probably to save the, there it goes. And then uh, on the inside here, they very cleverly found a way to put the batteries in here. The, there's like three uh, button cell batteries in this little uh, tube and you just uh, put them in the tube and then you push the whole tube down into this little uh, battery holder right there. So it's really cool how they did that. Okay, so then there's another cool feature on here um, and that's the crystal. So let me move this up so we can see it better. So this black part here is actually a switch. So when you push back on it, you have the cool looking crystal glowing in there. That's actually my favorite part right there. I think that looks so cool. So yeah, it's like a, it's just a plastic uh, crystal that's down in here, but the light is in behind it. But it looks really good. You can kind of see all the detail that's in there as well with these little gold pieces. But that looks really, really cool. So you cannot have the arrows blinking and the crystal glowing at the same time. I think it just puts too much of a drain on the battery. So you have to have one or the other. And see, that one shuts off on its own as well after a certain amount of time. So yeah, it's really cool that they uh, had those features in there. So there we have it, the EFX Reveal Lightsaber from 2011. And uh, I got to say this piece is pretty cool. I was reluctant to buy this when it first came out for some reason. I kind of wasn't really... Uh, wanting it and then I just decided at the last minute to buy it and I'm really glad I did now because like I said these things have become so incredibly rare and hard to get that they are commanding huge prices so I would have been really kicking myself uh, if I wanted one really bad now and wanting to having to pay like two or three thousand dollars or more for these things it's crazy um, I think the whole thing is you know pretty cool uh, my I'd say my only gripes with this is um, uh, this part here is a little weak when you have it in this position. See how the whole thing will bend like this? And there is a set screw somewhere on here that you can tighten to make it so that it's not so loose like that. And um, uh, But if you make it too tight, you won't be able to slide that in and out. So you're, you know, you're just going to have to fiddle with the screw in there if you decide to keep it like this. And you can go ahead and tighten it because you're not going to be closing it anyway. And uh, so that's the only kind of beef I had with that. But I mean, it's not really a big deal at all. And then the other thing that I do wish that this came with was the acrylic cover for this whole thing. It gives you this really nice stand here, and it even has a little ledge right here on the bottom that an acrylic cover would fit on. All the Master Replicas ones came with an acrylic cover. And so I was really surprised that this one didn't, and I think they really cheaped out on that. <laughs> so um, I do know that there were people after this, after this came out that were... Uh, finding people that could make this cover and there was a couple of companies I think that were making the acrylic cover but they were charging so much money for it I just didn't feel like it was really worth it besides that I've had this thing sitting in a display case for the last 10 years I think now so it's not like it gets any dust on it anyway but um, yeah it's a really cool lightsaber it's one of the kind of holy grails for a lot of people just because of how rare it is and if you can find one at a decent price and you really want one of these um, I don't even know what a decent price would be for something like this at this point because, I mean, I just can't believe how much uh, these things go for now. But uh, I'm going to have to retighten that, I can see. But uh, anyway, yeah, so that's it for this lightsaber. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the close-up look at it. And uh, if you did like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like. I really appreciate all of you watching. I always appreciate everybody uh, watching my videos. And so uh, thank you so much. And I will see you on the next video. So thank you again and have a good one.